So then, anyway, yes. I ended up in this church uh, over in Marshall, and it was a it was a good church. It was healthy, um, and I ended up meeting my current wife, awesome. and uh, we got married. Uh, one of the interesting things about that is <clears throat> I was so gun shy of women. I thought, how can I ever trust another woman? Turns out that Gail had been keeping extensive journals, and so had I. And so I thought. I'm going to test her. I said, would you be willing to exchange journals? That's, you know, that's yeah, to let somebody <laughs> look at all. The, yeah, the, the, this is the raw footage of my life. Yes. And so she gave me hers and I gave her mine. I sat up all night long at the Kettle Restaurant in Marshall, Texas, reading those journals from about 10 o'clock at night till the sun. I remember that seeing the sun come up and I was yeah. reading those journals. And I thought, this is a woman who has struggled in life, but she loves the Lord. Yeah. And I can live with that. Yeah, amen. And so that morning I went over to her house and said, would you marry me? <laughs> no. Yeah, I did. Okay. And that was 40 years ago in August. Yeah, praise so, God. Um, yeah, beautiful. We've, We've had uh, 40 years of ministry together, and um, she, she knows the Lord in a way that uh, the pain of um, her childhood, the pain of just um, growing up with uh, the kind of things that she dealt with that I didn't have to deal with. Um, what she, were, if you don't yeah. mind sharing, what were some of those things if it's not too personal? Well, her, her mom had really had a hard go of it because um, my wife's grandmother had uh, just basically lived the life of a prostitute. Okay. Sure. And she gave her kids up to adoption several times. She would go get my mother-in-law and her brother out of like the custody of some farmer or something and take them in somewhere else. And it was basically like almost selling her kids. Wow. Yeah. So <clears throat> then that's a tough upbringing. That's a tough upbringing. Oh, yeah. And then my wife and her siblings, that was just the kind of stuff that they grew up, you know, hearing and experiencing. And, uh, she had a tough go of it. And, um, spent most of her twenties just bouncing in and out of mental hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think, I'm going to have to have her on the program. Oh yeah. She's, <laughs> she's incredible. Yes. yes. And uh, as a matter of fact, when we first got married, she used to really try to hide that sure. because there was a lot of shame and, shame. and yeah, uh, that sort of thing about being in mental hospitals. Uh, and then finally she, she even says it's when desperation met Jesus. She yeah. just got to the point. She was so desperate uh, for just the peace of God that passes all understanding mm -hmm. that she latched onto the Lord and he healed her. Yeah, amen. And, uh, you know, she's like the rest of us. She's not perfect. She struggles. She's, you know, up and down. But her faith is so tangible and so real and so much a part of, you know, her pain and her struggle that you can't deny it. And the, the, the crazy thing is the thing that she thought would be an embarrassment and a shame has turned out to be her, her pulpit. Yes. It's her platform. Yes. And there, I mean, sometimes I'm kind of like, could you just put your phone down? And <laughs> who are you talking to now? Because well, people are calling her constantly yeah. wanting, you know, help and counseling. And God, God redeems those Situation. Absolutely. He uses our pain. And when we were off track, you know, God uses that to help us to, to reach those people. Because it's, in some sense, we're all unique, but in some sense, we kind of aren't in a way. There's so many people probably just that are your wife. I could see her ministering to thousands of people. I mean, just. Yeah. They, there was an article I read on CNN the other day. It said that the. Um, Young adults now say that they feel like the number one crisis in the United States is mental health. Sure. Uh, and I would venture to say that 
a vast majority of what we think now as mental health issues are spiritual problems. I agree. Uh, people are tormented spiritually. Yes. And they do not have the peace of Christ. Yeah. Amen. It's like t- the scripture says, you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, yeah. of power, and a sound mind. And uh, yeah, I think you're right. There's so many people that just, Mentally, they're just uh, bouncing all over the place. Unless you have the Lord as your foundation, you know, it's it's hard to make right decisions unless you have that peace of God that passes all understanding. You know, Jesus talked about the builders, you know, the one that built on the rock and the one that built on the sand, and storms are going to come to everybody. Guaranteed. Everybody's going to have storms. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian, if you're not. But at least with the the godly, the Christian, the born-again believer, you have that foundation. You have the Word of God. You can go to God in prayer. He is the rock, you know. Uh, He's our refuge, our strong tower. Not so much if you're, you know, lost and you're out in the world and you don't know Christ. uh, You'll never have that peace. Uh, Who was it? Was it Augustine that said... uh, you know, man's born with this vacuum and you know, we can try to fill it with drugs, sex, yeah. money, whatever. But, but it's a God-shaped vacuum. It's a God-shaped yeah, vacuum. Nothing else fits. Yeah.